Life is a journey made up of experiences, some good, some bad, some happy, some sad. We may all be different, but we are connected through the fact that no matter who we are, our stories all have hills and valleys. So tonight, we dedicate this episode to those who smile, even when their heart is breaking, who stare down standing up and starting over. Welcome to Sim Soul Sessions. everybody and welcome to tonight's show where I will be in the chair for the next half hour. It is a scary prospect but nothing worth doing is ever easy and sometimes the bigger and more scary the act the greater the impact. I know that because I've been through some scary moments where outcomes are unclear and when they did become clear there was nothing but despair. But here I am this evening ready to share some soul sessions from my own life to help you on your journey of self-discovery. Please feel free tonight to share in this discussion by using the hashtag SimSoulSessions. So a disclaimer right up front, if it is that you're looking for tea, I have none to serve. My guests have come on for the last nine weeks of the show and have opened their hearts to us. So I think it's only right that I do the same. Mine is a story of some hardships that I've faced and how I've been able to walk through them. And truth be told, the work continues daily. I am a work in progress. Many of you know me from I entered the world of media as a giddy 18 year old who had no idea what was in store. I grew up in this space and many of you saw me achieve milestones. For the most part, I've been very careful of sharing in the public space, even um, as what some would call a public persona, an introvert working in the field of an extrovert. But life has taught me so much, guys, of which I am unashamed. And so even though I am a little nervous, I am really humbled to have this opportunity to show you that we are no different, you and me, no different. So I asked you guys to share some questions that you wanted me to answer. And so I will do my best to answer those questions. Starting with this one from Facebook, Rosie Small asking, Hi Simone, have you ever struggled with self-esteem issues that have prevented you from achieving something you have always wanted? Okay. Um, yes, Rosie. My truth is that self-doubt plagued me even before I began a career in media. Um, I didn't even know I would get to really live my dream in media because after my first radio audition, fresh out of, um, of school, of university, I was told that I would never make it in this industry by a leading media boss. Well, in my early days in media, I had to develop very thick skin very quickly because the criticisms in this business, they come at you fast and furious and not all the criticism that comes is constructive. But that early period, although it was tough, it was a good moment of learning in my life. And I gained not only lessons, but also a village of friends who are still like my family today. And yes, I still doubt myself sometimes, but it doesn't stop me now from going after what I want. What I have learned is that you, if you allow that voice of self-doubt to take over, it will cripple you. So even in the face of that, and with that constant, will you be good enough, playing in your head, you have to go after what you want. And usually, you're successful. So thank you for your question, Rosie. Instagram, at Sashi Sash, what is this last? Sadler, who is the biggest driving force behind you in media? Um, okay, so I got my start in media at an audition in 1994 with Wycliffe Bennett, God rest his soul. He saw something in me that led him to give me a start in television. I went for a speech course, I ended up in television. 
Um, and that laid the foundation for what was to come. I tell you, even as I sit here, one of the cameramen in the studio is somebody who was on my first shoot in 1994. But I think it's really when I stepped into radio that I started to feel like I was coming into my own. Um, the self-doubt Rosie asked me about was, was still in my mind. Um, and having been told once already that radio was not the place for me, I went to a second audition at Fame FM. And that audition proved that there indeed was a space for me in this field. And for the 15 years that I worked in radio, it was a gentleman by the name of Francois Saint-Just, who was my mentor. He not only helped me hone my skills in radio and broadcasting, but in management and really in life. Sim. This is why you must have control over your show. I'm here to celebrate with you and congratulate you on all you have done. Yes, we remember those early days. If I'm to let out secrets, that's 23 years ago. And you came in as a very shy, unassuming person. And you already had the talent, we knew that. We heard your voice and felt your soul. And you started in the night helping people from then, mm -hmm. because those were some phone calls. Yes. And then you uh -uh. kept growing until you were part of the management team. And I heard you saying, yeah, I had to have a broad back. And yes, that was difficult. But we had a blast. So I'm so happy that you've been able to do this project that we've been speaking about <laughs> for years. And here it is. You've done it and done it so successfully, and again, helping others. Congratulations oh. to you. Thank you, boss. <laughs> <laughs> you you know, don't get to call me boss you anymore. You will always be boss, <laughs> whether you like it or not. And I am so grateful to you, Francois, um, for giving me a chance, and for believing in me, and for making me realize <clears throat> That no is not an option. <laughs> That's right. That I cannot do that, Francois, <laughs> is not an option. And that, as you've always told me, there are no problems, only opportunities for solution. There you go. And so you have set me a foundation that I'm grateful for. And if we were not into COVID time, I would get up and <laughs> squeeze you. <laughs> but I am not um, able to do that, but I will. We're going bump? We're going bump. Love, love you. Love and love only. Take Money care. Drop. Thank you so much. Laurie, if this is what you have in store for the rest of the night, you may as well just tell me I can go to my yard. Um, we have a video question from at the underscore Jules Allen. Jules, what's your question? Hi, Simone. My name is Jules and I'm here in Texas. So I've watched Sim Soul Sessions on YouTube and I absolutely love it. My question to you is this. What made you believe in the value of birthing same soul sessions? Where did you get this amazing idea? Hold that thought, Sim. Let's give the backstory first. I called him and I said to him, the program is ready to start and it has to start on Father's Day. We did not have a sponsor. We did not have a producer. We had a concept that we knew felt right. And we were coming off a major disappointment weeks before Nigeria. We were supposed to have started something about two weeks before and we got a major God blow. And we said to me, Simone, we can do this. And I don't know how, but I know how, obviously it's God. Doors that just started to open for no reason. <laughs> I mean, it's like a testimony, how you know, how it all came together. And when it all came together, like in the nick of time, I mean, when Howie said, all right, let's do it. Three weeks in a people, this birth and do in a three week. <laughs> Call this chick here, Lori. And I said, Lori, I need you on this project. And she did not hitch. She started working the same day. 
She don't ask me what I pay you know? She don't ask, Jody, say, never ask to be the, I didn't tell daddy that he was going to be the guest until like, um, even though we've been planning for three weeks, right? What Debbie and Marissa have done is incredible. The help Nigel has given is incredible. Mr. Johnson, thank you from the bottom of my heart for what you did. The gentleman sitting in that chair who is shooting right now is the gentleman with whom I did my first rapping shoot in 1994. Wow. And then sitting on the set. But you all are amazing. I think as a first show, we should be so incredibly proud of what we were able to do. And if we do this tonight, Dorian Johnson, with the time frame that we had, can you imagine when we hide up the machine, Papa? Look on word, we are coming. Thank you, everybody. Now that they have the backstory, you can answer the question. I don't remember what the question was. What was the question? How the show was birthed. Laurie, you're doing all sorts of things tonight. Um, the show was birthed out of my own experiences, <clears throat> having gone through some tough times. Um, Laurie, I don't know if what you're doing based on um, your running order, of which I'm unaware, I will get a chance to tell the folks those defining moments in my life with 30 seconds on the clock. Uh, maybe I'll be able to do it in the next segment. I'm not sure. But there are two defining moments um, in my life that if we have the time, I'd love to share with you guys on the other side of this break. One um, is my series of miscarriages. And the other is my divorce. Let's talk about it when we come back. Welcome back everybody to the show. I'm sharing elements of my journey with you tonight in the hope that it can help you. So before the break, I answered some questions and started getting into other matters that I'm gonna share in a little bit more deep, not too much, but just to, to tell you. Um, things happen to you in this life. All of us plan. Um, I think I can share with you that adulting is different and many of us can relate. Um, it's been a tough journey and you may make all the plans in the world and then things don't go according to plan because as we plan, God wipe, right? So um, throughout my journey, years ago, I would refer to myself as a statistic. The one in four who experiences infant loss and the one in five who experiences divorce. What I have learned from those things happening is that life happens to you. Sometimes it happens to you real fast and it knocks you down real hard. But I am sitting here today to let you guys know, and this is to answer the question how the program was birthed, that when you're going through it, you can't see, you can't understand the reason you can't see the purpose, and it feels like you can't get out. But having gone through that darkness and then feel myself coming through, I just figured in that moment that I had a responsibility to let others know that no matter how dark a place you get to in your life, if you just keep going, you will make it out. If you give yourself the permission to hurt, to cry, to feel the pain. I mean, it was a tough time because, you know, guys, when you work in this industry and things happen, you have to weather it, right? And then pretend everything's okay. So you still smile in the morning, you still have your corporate job. You do everything you're supposed to do. Um, I, somebody asked me just before we came on this morning, or this evening, sorry, I'm being as candid as I can, how it was that I had gotten to this size. 
always been slim. No, it wasn't always slim. When you're going through a time when one group of people is telling you, oh my gosh, you look ill. And another group of people is saying to you, um, you've never looked better in your life. Where do you land? Such is the nature of pain. Talk to you to the point where it dry your dung. Right, guys? I'm sharing this, and this show is about letting everybody know that it's okay to hurt mentally, and that mental hurt is something that we need to pay more attention to. Because if you're sick in this country, people are looking for some kind of physical wound or scar. But this is crucial, and you have to take care of it. And it's okay to be at that place where you know you've made mistakes. The key is, what do you learn from the mistakes so that you can move forward and that you can move on with your life, make better choices, and help other people along the way? I'm going to share some tips with you guys that helped me to get through um, very tough times. The first one. Be gentle and be patient with yourself. Healing does not happen overnight. It takes time and it takes work. Move at your own pace because there will be those who want to tell you, get up and brush yourself off, man, or snap out of it. Get up out of the bed, do something. Others may think it's time for you to stop crying. Get it together. Forget them. This is about you. Allow yourself to grieve because it is crucial to your progress. Two, as hard as disappointments are to accept, you have to get to a place where you realize that any, re re any rejection you experience is really a redirection. It's a nudge. Sometimes it's very gentle, sometimes not, to put us where we are supposed to be in this life. Every disappointment happens in your life for a reason and for a purpose. And we may not be able to see it in that moment or for a while, but trust me, it is true. And when you look at life through that lens, it makes certain things easier for you to understand. Putting you first is the most important thing you can ever do. It's funny how we're often guilted for doing this, but the truth is that if you don't take care of you first, you have nothing to offer to anybody else. Self-care should be your priority. You and your happiness are most important. Choose you. And finally, your mental health is key. If you are not mentally well, then you will not be physically well either. And too often we disregard those who experience anxiety and depression, but they are real illnesses. And if you are one of those people, experiencing any of those issues, you can get help here. Have a look. If you need to write down a number, write down a number. If you need to screenshot this, do that. All I'm saying is, guys, there will be tough times, but don't give up. Have faith and have hope. This is just one chapter in your book. The rest is still unwritten. Don't sell yourself short. And remember, once there is life, it's not over. Don't ever count yourself out. Hi, Mommy. Before you go any further, I have something to say. I want to thank you for working on yourself. Thank you for never counting yourself out. And lastly, for showing me how to love. A few other people want to show their love for you as well. Check this out. Come here, you go. It's a tall. Um, just know that this is our safe space. And I just want to thank you for this show. Just like Grace, where we are Jamaica's first choice for great food, uniting people, improving lives. Sims Soul Session. 
is Jamaica's number one show during this time of uncertainty, uniting people, improving lives. And that's what you did. Sim, you've done it. You've managed to find another way to warm the hearts of yours. Thank you for sharing stories of inspiration, hope, and triumph. I am so proud of you. I am not surprised because I know that you were born to do this kind of work, to help people by talking with them, by listening to them, by helping them to take their pain and transform it into resilience. You uplift them. You have been my bookend. You've held me up. You continue to hold me up through every challenge, every obstacle, every success. Everybody has their failures, fears, and flaws, but uh, we appreciate you giving everybody a platform to put those fears to bed. Wow, I can't believe season one is done already. I am so proud of you. The show has had an amazing start. No surprise for me. We discussed the ideas for the show, but more importantly, why the show? It was your dream and your genuine care to help people through real life struggles. And this was special. Congratulations on the fulfillment of your lifelong dream by hosting your own talk show, Sim Soul Sessions. The name could not be more befitting as the people are loving it the way they love you. You are truly an overcomer. God has been good to you. God bless you in all your future endeavors Simone, congratulations. Your father loves you very much. And remember, when you're having your show, mom and dad, we are always there in your corner. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Big up. I love you. I don't know how my heart no box yet. <laughs> but I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you to infinity and beyond. The path has been set, and may you be blessed as you lift us all. We love you, congrats, and God bless you. Sim Soul Sessions forever. Love you, sis. Mom is always in your corner. I love you. Mm -hmm. Remember you started your show with a blessing? I conclude by saying, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace and a blessed show and a great future. Amen. Love you. Wow. Ah, thank you guys. Um, it's so good to see Ricky and Andre in that clip. Everybody else, can't believe I got my friend Kim to do this incredible but i remember when we were um pitching this show one of the questions we were asked by our soon-to-be sponsor was do you guys think jamaica is ready for something like this because we are not a sharing society um and from the time we were pitching the show actually this was pitched to be the final episode and they said you sure you want to do that and I said to them, this, this culture that we have of not sharing and everybody pretending everything is okay all the time, that's exactly the culture that I want to book. And I am so grateful that they jumped on board. Thank you very much to them and to everybody who was in that clip just now and to you guys who have just made this your safe space. Incredible. My heart is full. I can only say thank you. Say thank you. Thank you. Other side, folks, we'll be right back to wrap it up.
Welcome back, everybody. So I saw a quote today that I want to share with you before we head into our affirmation. It's from someone called Haruki Murakami, and it goes, quote, once a storm is over, you will remember how you made it through, how you managed to survive. You won't ever be sure whether the storm is really over. But one thing is certain. When you come out of the storm, you won't be the same person who walked in, unquote. Life is a test, everybody. And sharing your scars can help someone they need or someone get the information they need to pass that test. And now, it's time for us to wrap it up with tonight's affirmation. So I am so grateful to my guests this season for sharing their soul journeys and soul stories with us. Their courage and their candor have emboldened me in my belief that emptying the contents of our heart and sharing our scars can be the salve that soothes and indeed that saves. We all have a plan for our lives and having those plans derailed can be traumatic and can be actually devastating. Starting over, all right, let's do it. It's such a scary, almost impossible prospect, but it is also an amazing blessing. There is a blessing in being broken because the process to being mended can be magical. And what you thought was rejection may actually be your redirection. Your detours are divine. Your wasted years were not wasted. A second chance is an opportunity for us to wipe the slate clean and to start over. Think about how many wonderful inventions and creations we wouldn't have today if the person working on it had given up after the first failure. Failure, guys, is a built-in life accessory. It's there to teach us life lessons, but we have to learn the lessons in order not to make the same mistakes again. Armed with those lessons, we dust ourselves off and we go again. Yes, starting over is hard, but the secret to getting it right? Start and don't stop. There is no quick fix, guys. It's a slow and steady climb. And depending on how far or how low you're journeying from, you may feel sometimes that you will never get to the top, but eventually you will see that crack of light, that glimmer of hope, and you will realize that the plans weren't meant to harm or hurt you, but to prosper you and to give you hope and a future and a purpose. It happens to change you, to build you, to make you stronger, and to help you be that change for someone else. Celebrate every day, every win, no matter how small. Give yourself credit for every victory, just for getting through every day. And remember, as my friend Tammy Chin said weeks ago, becoming is not a victorious, glorious thing. It doesn't always look pretty. Becoming is gritty and dirty and ugly and painful. As for me, there are difficult days, but I feel like I'm in a returning. And as Tammy said, I feel like I'm getting back to me and the core of who I am and who I think God means for me to be. And it may not be glamorous and it may not be everything everybody expected it to be, but it is me. And there is something really beautiful about returning to who you are. Thank you for that, Tammy. Affirmation for tonight, our soul food. I will use my failure and failing, I'm sorry, I'll use my failure and falling apart as an opportunity to reboot and rebuild. I accept with my whole heart the gift that is starting over. And it is a gift. Thank you guys for sharing this safe space with me this season. That's it for this season. Our prayer is that we will see you again real soon for season two. Until then, every blessing, and please remember to count your blessings. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>